if you're asking, is the Line 3 project necessary, you have to think about what's the alternative. So the alternative is not to replace it and to let this infrastructure continue to get older and to decay and to necessitate more and more work. Throughout the year, every year, I think we're up over 100 repairs we're having to do on it now a year. Those are all um, possible uh, safety hazards as these we send people out to go work on. Right now, it constantly has to be uh, dug up and checked and checked for anomalies and things like this. So when Enbridge started this process of trying to replace this over four years ago, it's like four and a half years ago now, by the time they actually break ground on it, if it goes through, it's gonna be close to five years. It actually reminds me a lot of the situation that our community here in Bemidji was faced with back in 2008, when we were in the middle of the Great Recession along with the rest of the United States. And at that time, we actually were pretty blessed in our community to have a different pipeline project coming through. Uh, the Trans-Canada um, Alberta Clipper project was happening at that time. And so at a time when a lot of the rest of the country was really struggling, we actually were pretty busy. We had a lot of workers that were here. There were actually people renting out their basements and their backyards for campers and all kinds of things. The restaurants were full. And so I look at line three as, as a potential solution to really help Bemidji and again, our surrounding communities get back on our feet. And uh, I think it couldn't be any more timely. The line that they're currently running and using is uh, only being run at 40%. So at that point, they decided, you know, as stewards of the environment, instead of spending money and digging up the ground all over and over and over again to maintain this aging line that is not getting any younger, they decided at that point in time to replace it or at least start taking steps to. We're all interested in being more environmentally responsible in every way Absolutely. that we can be over time. Um, here at LaValle Industries, we're currently working on a next generation generator. that can be more efficient and produce uh, more power with less carbon footprint than has previously been done. So in preparedness for going to work on these pipelines, uh, there's a tremendous amount of training. I know that for Enbridge in particular, um, there are several different types of training, but environmental and safety are at the top of the list. Being in the industry with these people, third, fourth, fifth, sixth generation pipeliners that I work with and are great friends with to this day, these guys are professionals to the nth degree. When they do put an install a new pipeline or replace an old, they always leave it better than how they found it. And I know this is gonna be done the right way, it's gonna be clean, and it's gonna be environmentally friendly at the same time. We all live in this community. We have homes, we have wells, we fish on these lakes, we hunt in these woods, we jog on these trails and everything in between. So for us to allow something to come into our backyard that we thought was gonna in any way damage any of that, we would be on the front lines fighting it. I've gone to probably 50 different meetings, different meetings, town hall meetings in Bemidji, in Crookston, in Deep River Falls. I have heard a lot of differing opinions from myself. Um, having said that, I'm respectful of their opinions. As you know, whether it's your spouse, your mother or father, your best friend, you're never gonna see eye to eye with any of those people 100% every day, every day of the year. But how do you talk through those things? How do you decide what's best? You do it through conversation and mutual respect. The oil that would normally be transported through that line um, and now at, at its diminished capacity, um, a lot of that oil is having to move through the Bakken, you know, by rail, um, through trucks and things like this, and it's not nearly as efficient. It costs more to move it, and it's not as safe. Looking at line three replacement, we have three choices. Number one, we can not do anything and let it continue to go. If it's at 40% capacity today, what will it be tomorrow? That's unsafe. Option number two is we can stop using it altogether. If we do that, then we're going to start moving oil via rail, truck, and other means. That doesn't feel safe to me. No. Or number three, we can replace it. 
of those three choices, I'm always going to choose to replace it because to me that feels like the responsible choice. So at the end of the day, why are we in favor of line three? Because it needs to be replaced, it's aging infrastructure. It's going to improve the safety of our communities and it's going to bring economic benefit that we desperately need right now.